Yo, internet, Dustin Dolby here. Thank you so much for returning to Workflow. Make sure to thumb up the video and subscribe while I got you here. Today I'm gonna run you through a really clean workflow for how to photograph high quality catalog product shots, complete with clipping path selections, and we're gonna do this with one speed light so we can scale this across a whole inventory of colors, skews, different shapes or sizes. We'll shoot a few different cosmetics today as a good example, just using one speed light and a little bit of AI. So the AI aspect of today's video is auto retouch, which is going to help us import our photos into Photoshop with all the clipping pads already selected for us automatically, which obviously saves a ton of time, is so useful for clients. And auto retouch basically just helps you automate really repetitive things product photographers have to do, like clipping pads, selections, ghost mannequins, et cetera, et cetera. And thank you to Auto Retouch, they're the sponsor of today's video. And make sure you learn more about them, their link is below. So to start, we're gonna shoot this duo separately, because I think then they won't reflect on each other, and that'll unlock the ability for us to get an ultra clean look. We have this nice big piece of diffusion paper I cut out, extending all the way from the product to the lens. Now we're lighting this up with a strip box here, it's a speed light strip box, so we really want to invest in having a good little system, and taking a second to tweak it before we fall in love. Now I don't want to give you a TED talk on reflective products, but I'll just mention two things here. Uh, where we have this, this padding, this visual dark padding is a direct consequence of over here, the fact that the strip box is not moved to the back, it's moved up a little bit. A second thing, you think the lens should reflect right here, like the right side of the V. So we're getting everything to the left of it covered with that diffuser setup, that big milky diffuser setup. So that's a good sign. Alrighty, so we just attached a reflector card here, which is worth its weight in gold. And I'm gonna place this to recycle the light back in our setup. The depth you place it, will affect the padding position, the dark padding that we just discussed a moment ago. So we won't get it right away, but we're obviously looking for something symmetrical. It doesn't have to be symmetrical if you're doing something creative, but I just want a nice, reliable system here, because if we're shooting a bunch of SKUs that have the same product type, these things are gonna pay dividends because they're gonna keep working item by item, color by color. I like these distances. It's looking kind of classy. Looking clean, looking really similarly clean. It's kind of like playing a game of operation where you don't want to touch anything too much. But most of the time, what I'm looking for is these distances at either side of the text, because that kind of gives you something to grab onto. But we're looking nice and centered across our three cosmetics. Now in our composition, this is gonna be sitting next to a closed capsule, which is no problem, because we can just shoot one of those, and not only will it be easier to scale across everything, but it'll be really consistent just shooting one of them. Looks clean. So we're gonna hop onto the computer and prepare them for import into auto retouch for path selection prior to Photoshop. Okay, everyone, so here we are in the dashboard of auto retouch. We're gonna automate our selections into Photoshop really quick. And if you wanna follow along, the first trial images are totally free, so you can go ahead and make an account below at autoretouch.com. And if you use Shopify or WooCommerce, there's also direct integrations available, which are super useful. So check out for that link below. So we wanna remove our background, not from model photography, but our product images. Obviously, removing background from product images is pretty useful with a vector mask or a layer mask to save what we're doing and that's what I'm looking to automate today. Other things that are kind of cool though are the ghost mannequin effect and the model photography, skin retouch, shadows. There's a lot of different things you can do and create workflows, no pun intended because that's our username, but I wanna show you the pre-made workflows because it's a bit of a modular system. We're gonna be removing the background, but there's a ton of different bulk editing processes you could set up for you know e-commerce, model, fashion photography, et cetera, because most retailers aren't just selling on their own website, but they're selling on other marketplaces and channels, each with their own image and size requirements. So using an automated solution can help you approach that in a bulk editing way. It's gonna be pretty minimal. So let me show you what I think we would do to get our images looking nice. I'm gonna create an empty workflow and it's a real simple drag and drop. So we wanna remove the background. I wanna select the object cause we're not using a clothing or model or anything. And we could export a vector path. I'm happy with just the layer mask for now, that works, but we could get, you know, quite fine-tuned if we wanted to. And I wanna to export to Photoshop. So I'm not looking to add a shadow or anything. We might do that once the mask is created in Photoshop, but I just wanna export this. And do I want a PNG? Maybe. I'm gonna do a PSD just so I can have multi-layer, including the layer mask 
and I want the input image just in case as a safety guideline. Ironically, I don't want the safety guidelines because I think we'll be good visually. I'm good with that and the DPI staying the same is great. But I just want the raw files to be cut out with a nice airtight mask. So I think this workflow will work perfectly. So I'm clicking process images. I'm going to throw in the images we just shot from our shoot. No subscription fee or user fee or platform fee. It's totally credit based pay as you go which I like, so then you can work it into the budget for your shoot after your trial images. And they're starting as cheap as 0.10 euro per clipping path, 0.20 for a skin path, which is a little more complex, and 0.50 for the ghost mannequin, which is quite complex. And we're gonna grab all of our files from that export. I'll meet you guys inside of Photoshop and we'll retouch this together. Okay, everybody, so here we are inside of Photoshop. We have our four folders that we exported from Auto Retouch and they're looking clean as a whistle. And we have our layer mask, a sort of smart version in each folder. We also have a cutout and the original version just to be safe, but I'm just interested in this smart layer masked version for our composition today. And this mask has many more implications than just catalog work. You could use this to put a swatch behind the cosmetic or a bunch of creative stuff. Think about that. So very useful to have. Now I'm going to put these on a reflection to add a sense of class digitally. I could have did it in camera, but I like having different solutions to achieve the same thing in product photography. And when you have a mask, it's only a few clicks away. So let me show you a fast way to do it. I'm going to grab the lid and the pink cosmetic and just duplicate them. Control J. Then I'll hit Control T to bring up the transformational properties. Right click and hit flip vertical. So hopefully you can see where this is going. I'm going to place these beneath our actual products, the reflections. And holding shift, I'm going to drag them down just so we get a sort of faux reflection. Now I don't want these at full opacity, I want them around two thirds, and I'll also make a new layer over everything else. Hit G to bring up my gradient, and a white to transparent gradient, I'm gonna linearly apply right here, just so they fall off a bit, and I start to get a nice kind of catalog e-commerce look right away, just through that reflection. Now this gives us a nice clean look right out the gate, and obviously there's a spectrum to how much you want to retouch your product photos. But let me show you something quick you could do if you wanted to get rid of just the bottom of this area on the cosmetic looking a little different. Normally if I shot a cosmetic, it'd be mounted up in the air, but I wanted to have a really general scheme today that could apply to a whole storefront and not be tailor-made just for the cosmetic. So if you had the time within your project and the means to retouch this, here's how I would do it really quickly. I would duplicate this Control-J, Control-E to rasterize that new layer by itself. And I would bring out the marquee tool and I'm just going to grab a clean area of the cosmetic here. Hit Control-J to isolate that on its own layer and Control-T to transform it. And I'm going to drag it down and see the area at the bottom. This is just going to tuck over it and make it perfect. And it's a subtle difference, but it's nice and clean. So I'll hit OK, hold Alt and create a layer mask, which will create a black layer mask. And then all I have to do in that mask is just paint white where I want this effect to exist and just repair those few areas. And I could duplicate this bottom across all the cosmetics quickly or just do that as a quick fix to make it a little more elevated in the rest of our scheme. So thank you for exploring this lighting setup with me and auto retouching the mask work. It's nice to have a variety of approaches, I think for capturing catalog work and having mask baked in do provide a pretty valuable asset. So it's a pretty cool approach. Make sure to subscribe because we have a lot more product photography tutorials on the way. And thank you again to auto retouch, check them out below and until next time, stay well.